I'm so grateful for this woman. I think I've said it before that, uh, I'm pretty sure I've said it before, but one of the ways that I know that God loves his son is that he blessed me with Patricia. And so, I honor her so much, and I'm so proud of her. As she turns 47 years fly. <laughs> <laughs> and so I just want you to, you guys to know that um, how much we love y'all and how much your support for the two of us as uh, the lead pastors, how much it really means to us. And, you know, that's not a, a day that goes by where we don't spend hours talking about y'all. <laughs> and just um, what your needs are and, you know, what we see and just how much we want to take y'all to the next level spiritually, you know. So you all mean a, a great deal to us and to our family yes. personally. So this next season that we're about to go into is going to be, uh, I'm very excited to see where the Lord is going to take us next. I feel, personally, I think, um, um, you know, I don't know about y'all, I don't know what the Lord's telling y'all, <laughs> but he's telling me I'm about to be elevated in my, in my walk, in my gifting, in my calling. Come on. Yes, I feel it strongly. Yes, and so I'm very, very excited about that. It's a lot of stuff that... Sometimes I get up here and I want to teach off, and I'm like, they ain't, they ain't ready yet. They ain't ready yet. <laughs> Hold on to it. Hold on to it. <laughs> so, um, but having said that, I won't be up here very long. Okay. <laughs> um, and I know we say that all the time, but... Um, I want y'all to really catch this message. You know, just pay close attention. You know, find the nuggets. Mm. You know, listen to what the Lord is trying to say here. Amen. Amen. Our scripture is going to come out of Matthew 24, 6 through 13. Again, that's Matthew 24. 6 through 13, and it reads, And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed, for this must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are but the beginning of birth pains. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and put you to death. And you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will fall away or stumble and betray one another and hate one another. And many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. And because lawlessness will be, will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. So, Father, I thank you for this word that you've given to your people this morning, Father. Hallowed be your name in this place, Lord. Uplift it and glorify be your name in this place, Lord. Amen. Father, I just ask that the spiritual eyes and ears of your people be opened this morning and their hearts be tilled to receive this seed of wisdom that you have given me for your people this morning, Father. Father, I decrease so that you may increase in this place. Let the people not see me, but see and hear you and what you are trying to say through this man, God. Lord, we honor you, we praise you, we uplift you, and we magnify you in this place. And it's in the matchless name of Jesus Christ we pray, and all the saints say, Amen. Amen. You may be seated.
Y'all pray for your pastor. My back is trying to tweak out on me this morning. And we ain't gonna have that in the name of Jesus. I bind it. Back you coming to a line. Amen. <laughs> All right. Now in Matthew 24 and Mark 13, Jesus gives a prophetic preview of the state of the world just prior to his return. Now, if we look at the situation in the world right now, uh, you, can look all, you can look all around and many of the things that Jesus predicted, we can see in this day and age. It doesn't even, you don't have to spend hours on CNN or Fox News or whatever. A lot of this stuff, you can just go outside and see. You can see some of the lawlessness and loss of love right before your very eyes. You don't need the news to tell you. But he also gave directions to believers in these situations. The key requirement that Jesus gave us can basically, basically be summed up in one word. Endurance. So the title of this message is, But the One Who Endures. Now let's look back at uh, Matthew 24, 6-13. I'm going to read it one more time. Uh, anybody following along? Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And you will hear wars and rumors of wars. Do we hear that? Yes. Today we've been hearing viruses and rumors of viruses. Right. Right. Yes, we will. See that you are not alarmed, for this must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, Kingdom against kingdom. We see that too. And there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these but all these are but the beginnings of birth pains, and they will deliver you up to tribulation and put you to death. And you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. How many of us understand? I'm in a place right now, well, I can't wait to be hated for Jesus' sake, for his name's sake. I want y'all to hate me for that. You know, people hate you for all kind of stuff that don't have nothing to do with you in life. Wow. They make up stuff about you. Sure. They hate right. you because of how you look, what you drive, right. where you right. work, how much money you make. Right. I want to be hated because I love Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, somebody. How many of us can really say that? <clears throat> wow. And then many will fall away or stumble and betray one another and hate one another. And many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. Are we seeing that? Yes. <laughs> and because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. I want y'all to understand something. Because I just recently got this revelation myself. We think, when we think of lawlessness and love growing cold, we often think of something outside of the church. No, that's talking about what's in the church. Lawlessness growing in the church. And where there's lawlessness, you don't have the capacity to love. We spend so much time. You know what? I'm going to get to that later. But verse 13 goes on. It says, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. The one who endures to the end will be saved. Now, all of this wars and rumors of wars and viruses and rumors of viruses and nation rising against nation and all the betrayal, this is a, a frightful and it's, it's scary stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, this end time stuff just before Jesus comes, it's going to be a scary time. Yeah. I don't know about y'all. I'm not trying to say, I'm not trying to tell y'all the world going to end tomorrow. Right. <laughs> but if we look at the word and we look at the world, it looks like it ain't far away. Right. Now, you know, time to us is different than time to God, of course. Mm -hmm. But I think we can all come to an agreement that it smells like the final days. <laughs> it has the scent yes. of the final days. 
But he says the one who endures to the end will be saved. You know, I look at our current generation, and I'm not just talking about uh, millennials, because we all live in this time. This is all our generation. I don't care if you're 90 years old. This is, we're all in the same time period. This is our generation. Um, I look at uh, the state of the church and what we're creating, what we're cranking out these days. You know, the church needs to be a place where endurance is cultivated. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But what it's looking like is the problem is we have too many church leaders that are overly ambitious. Mm -hmm. Personal ambition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When talking about person trying to spread the kingdom, trying to advance the kingdom, there's too much personal ambition and all you have to do is go on social media and you can see it. Anybody can pick up their phone and become a preacher in two minutes on social media wow. and push their own agenda. Wow. You can start a church in a matter of moments. You think these people are interested in cultivating endurance? No. So what you wind up with, but they do know that people have itchy ears. They may not tell you that, but they know you got itchy ears. Right. They're going to tell you what you want to hear. Mm -hmm. So what you wind up with is you got people who will profess to believe in Christ. You have people that will profess to believe in the gospel. You might even have people that go to church religiously. You have people that pay their tithes, that memorize scripture. But when trial and tribulation comes to them, they about soft as a wet hostess snack cake. <laughs> they have no endurance whatsoever. Let's look at Mark 13, 12 through, uh, 12 through 13. It says, And brother will deliver a brother over to death, and the father his child. And children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake. Yes. <laughs> but the one who endures to the end will be saved. Jesus is telling us over and over, endurance, endurance, stand your ground, have patience. There are places, uh, depending on what version of the Bible you're reading, it may say perseverance. In other places, it may say patience. These are all kind of like synonyms for the same thing. It's all coming down to the fact that we need endurance. It all kind of means the same thing in the word. It just depends on what version you read. Um, let's take a look at Romans 5 real quick. Romans 5, 1 through 5. It says, therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, we have also obtained access by faith into his grace in which we stand and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. More than that, we rejoice in our sufferings. How many of y'all rejoice in your sufferings? Wow. You know, I used to, uh, when I first heard, read this vo uh, verse, uh, and that's why, it's, that's why it's dangerous just to read stuff and just skim over it. And not really ask the Lord what he's trying to say. And, you know, you can, you can memorize stuff all day long, memorize scripture. But if you don't know what it means, you really, you're really going to struggle. It just doesn't, it's not going to have any effect on your life. It's not going to have any spiritual effect on, on you. Mm -hmm. And I did that with this verse. Because it sounds good. Oh, yeah, I'm rejoicing my suffering. Until you start suffering. Right. Right. <laughs> it's like, because it's a paradox. It doesn't make it, it doesn't make sense. Why would you rejoice in suffering? 
but he gives the reason. It goes on, Paul gives the reason. He says, suffering produces or endurance. And endurance produces character, and character produces hope. Now, what is the hope? What is hope in the Christian life? You know, it's a little bit different than what the world considers hope to us. Our hope is a kind of a calm, serene, undefeatable confidence, you know, that we can overcome any problem or any obstacle that the devil can throw at us or the world can throw at us. That's what Christian hope is. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. I look at it like... Um, because that's another interesting part here where it talks about God's love having been poured into our hearts. So, I look at us kind of like clay, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. You know, you use clay to build pottery. Mm -hmm. um, and our suffering is if, if someone molds you, if the Lord is molding you mm -hmm. into some kind of pot, for instance, that's supposed to hold a liquid, and you don't go through the fire, then when something gets poured into you, it's just going to seep out the bottom. Mm -hmm. See, that fire, that fire is your suffering. Wow. So it's not good enough to just be molded into something you got to go through that fire because it hardens you. It removes all the pores in the clay so that what gets poured in doesn't come out. So that until this, this character is built in us through suffering, God can't pour his spirit into us. You're not ready. And that's why suffering is so important to us. Yes. Yes. And that's why we should rejoice over the suffering. Wow. Wow. Because of what it's producing in us. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's good. That's real good. So it's, um, it's critical to the Christian life that believers hold out. You got to hold out. Mm -hmm. When you're faced with hardship, pain, and disappointment. Um, we see it all the time in the church where you have believers who start out on fire. Yeah. <laughs> Fight for the Lord. <laughs> and they bask in that mountaintop experience, right? I tell this story about my son all the time. When he, uh, when I, I remember we went to our first, uh, when we started having Bible study and went over to Josh's place. That was my first time. And met Josh. And everybody's talking to Josh about, hey, man, we're so proud of you, man, for... You know, <laughs> like, we're so proud of you, man, for, for your progress and all this kind of stuff. And Josh is like, yeah, man. <laughs> you know, and, you know, rightfully, it's, so, it's, it's good to have that encouragement for your brothers. But I'm sitting over there on the side like, mm -hmm. wait. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just wait. Just wait. Because the Lord has to take you down them slopes. Yeah. Off that mountaintop. Yeah. See, at first, when you're, on the, when you're on the mountaintop, on the horizon, you see nothing but infinite possibilities. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Yes. In the Lord. Yeah. It's like, wow. This is awesome. I love you, Lord. Can I just rest my head on your chest? <laughs> but you don't get to stay there. Yeah. So on the way down, <laughs> he still got to show you those high places. Come on. Where you still have idols in your heart. Yes. Think you got them hidden away, but the Lord gonna show them to you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Some of you, it may be a little bit of perversion yes. that you're still dealing with. Mm -hmm. Mm 
And it's not just that you have the perversion, but you exalt it above him. Yes. Oh my God. Like you'd rather have the perversion than the Lord. Wow. That's, uh, that's tough and some people don't want to admit that. Right. But why else would you not be able to stop? Yes. Right. I, I know it's tough. Yes. Right. But take it up with the Lord. <laughs> some of you, it may be that you have no control over your appetites. Mm. Maybe food. Watch out now. It may be social media. It may be television. It could be a lot of stuff. You have no control over it. None whatsoever. For some of you, you got a high place where you keep your smart mouth. This is why I keep telling y'all that this life ain't for punks. Because y'all want to keep your smart mouth. You want to keep your perversions but that's gonna keep you from the blessing. Yeah. You can't have it both ways. Yes. That's good. Yes, God. Then when you finally reach the valley, when the Lord finally gets you all the way down there, uh -huh. he ain't done. Jesus. Then he's gonna hold up a mirror. So look at yourself. Jesus. Look at all the ugliness that you have in you. Wow. That's good. The fact that you don't know how to keep a person's confidence. Wow. You got so. Wow. Oh my. That's good. You don't know how to celebrate other people's success? That's wow. ugliness in you. Wow. Throwing people under the bus and <laughs> you know at work throwing people under the bus and y'all y'all know how y'all know what I'm talking about. You know, that's ugliness. The Lord will show you that. Yes, he will. He's, he wants to get that stuff out of you. Yes. So that he can use you to advance his kingdom. Yes. But so many people don't want to go through that. Yeah. And so y'all fold up like or or kami. Like a little origami animal. Like a little paper giraffe. Just fold it up. In the corner crying. Because you don't want you don't want to go through the fire. Yes. My God. That's real good. Some people even leave the faith because they don't want to go through that. They want to so stay true. on that mountaintop. That's so true. That's, that's so true. true. So true. We don't get to do that. None of us. I'm talking to you. Yes. I don't care how good you think you are. And Jesus said, none is good but the Father. Amen. Let's look at James 1, 2 through 4. James says, count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its full effect. Or finish its work. Yes. So that you may be mature and complete, lacking in nothing. Yes. Now, James is essentially saying the same thing as Paul, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. When we're walking in Christ-likeness, with our purposes united with God's, and we allow our trials and sufferings to produce endurance in us, it makes us well-rounded Christians. Yes. Yes. It strengthens us. Yes. How many want to be well-rounded? Yes. You know, you can't, we, sometimes we get stuck on one aspect of our faith and we just stay there. Yes. But because we don't want to go through the suffering yes. that it takes to become well-rounded. That's it. That's right. That's it. This Bible. Yes. Mm -hmm. I make this up. We, we need well-rounded Christians yes. in the body of Christ now. Yes. That's going to mature us. We're walking around with a bunch of babies. <laughs> like sometimes you walk in a, um, I, you know, and I'm not trying to say I'm grown, but I'm willing to admit. <laughs> I'm willing to admit there are areas of my faith where I'm still a baby. Yes. Right. And I need to grow up. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's good. It's a process. 
you know, because you, you mature in one area and then you get all like, Lord, I'm on this mountain. I, I love it up here. Uh -huh. Infinite possibilities. And he drag you by your hand, take yeah. you back down here, down into the valley so he can show you some new stuff yes. that he wants to get out of you. Yes. Because he wants you to become more well-rounded and mature. And instead of rejoicing, we lay out on the floor like a five-year-old and kick in a circle. <laughs> now, um, let's look at Hebrews 10.35. Hebrews 10.35. It says, therefore, do not throw away your confidence. Very important. Do not throw away your confidence, which will be richly rewarded. For you have need of endurance, so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what is promised. See, this is about waiting on the Lord. There's a period of time between doing what the Lord tells you to do to be entitled to the promise mm -hmm. and actually receiving the fulfillment of the promise. Yeah. Amen? Amen. That's good. We have to wait. Mm -hmm. And during that period, this is building endurance. Yes. Because there's some things that you're going to go through during that period. It goes on, it says, for yet a little while and the coming one and, and the coming one will come and will not delay. But my righteous one shall live by faith. And if he shrinks back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed, but of those who have faith and preserve their souls. I find it interesting the writer here only leaves us a couple of choices. You endure or preserve and inherit the promise, mm -hmm. or you shrink back or backslide and be destroyed. Wow. So many times we, uh, we come to church and we get a, we get a word from the Lord. Mm -hmm. and I know um, Apostle and Prophet have seen this time after time after time again. You give people a word from the Lord and they expect it to come to pass five minutes later. Exactly. Where's my breakthrough? Right. Right. Where's my money at? Right. I'm supposed to get a promotion. <laughs> Lord, trip <laughs> No patience whatsoever. No endurance. People will leave the faith. They will not, not, not just backslide. I'm talking about complete. Like you still call yourself a Christian, you know, but you just you don't come to church. You don't read the Bible. You don't pray. You don't do. You don't do any of that other stuff. And you don't even, you don't even try to keep that connection between you and the Lord. Wow. You just, wow. I'm not even talking about them. I'm talking about people that start setting up altars in their house and praying to ancestors. Wow. 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 Them type of people. People will completely leave the faith because they don't have the endurance to wait on the Lord. They don't want to go through all the processing. And it takes that. Amen? Amen. We have to be honest with ourselves. Are you going to endure or are you going to shrink back? How many of you ever ask yourself that question? Mm -hmm. Am I going to endure or am I going to shrink back? Because everybody in here right now is going through something. Mm -hmm. Every single one of us. Mm -hmm. We all have a situation somewhere in our lives where we're like, I don't know if I can take this. Mm -hmm.
And the Lord, the Lord is watching. Amen. He, ain't, he ain't missing nothing. Mm -hmm. I'm not even talking about the stuff that you actually do or your behavior. He knows what you're thinking yeah. in those situations. Yes. He knows your heart. That part is wow. <laughs> are you shrinking back? Or are you enduring and persevering? Mm -hmm. He sees it. Let's look at, uh, I'm almost done. I'm going to take a quick look at uh, Habakkuk 2 and 3. It says, for still the vision awaits its appointed time. It hastens to the end. It will not lie. If it seems slow, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. Yes. Wow. Wow. So the Bible is telling us over and over and over, you have to be able to endure. Yes. And that's something that, you know, I don't blame a lot of Christians for not having that endurance. It's because we don't cultivate that in the church. We have to do a better job in the church of cultivating endurance and perseverance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Notice how it says, you see the vision awaits its appointed time, not yours. We want everything on our time. Yeah. Can't wait for nothing. <laughs> Help me out, patient. Help me out, Casey. You know we have this. Uh, we have this expression in English. <laughs> it's not a sprint; it's a marathon. And we Christians often equate the Bible verses about endurance and perseverance to a marathon. You know. But the power to endure doesn't come from our own physical fitness. It has nothing to do with that. Right. It doesn't have anything to do with your willpower. Right. It's really a byproduct of our staying committed to living a life of Christ-likeness, no matter the circumstances. Yes. Yeah. That's what endurance is. Yes. It's not just remaining in the suffering for as long as you can to show that you can get to the end. No. There's a way to go through the suffering. Come on. There's a, there's, a, there's a heart's posture yes. that you should have when you're going through your yes. suffering. Yes. Regardless of the wars and rumors of wars and nations rising against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms, regardless of the familial betrayals, mm -hmm. the famines, the earthquakes in various places, it's those who face life's calamities in Christ-likeness that exhibit the endurance that leads to the fulfillment of God's promises. Wow. Let me say that again. It is those who face life's calamities in Christ-likeness that exhibit the endurance that leads to the fulfillment of God's promises. Yes. So let's be honest with ourselves today. If you faced a true calamity or even a situation that challenged your sensibilities and character in some way and you displayed the spiritual fortitude of a melted Kit Kat. <laughs> Just repent. <laughs> repent today. And pray for endurance. <laughs> well, what we need is a, and it, we need a, an endurance. <laughs> we, need, we need an endurance. <laughs> Our endurance as Christians is driven by the fruits of the Spirit. Amen? Amen. That's, that's the engine behind our endurance. It's the fruits of the Spirit. Yes, Love, joy, peace, kindness. Generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Amen? Amen. Amen. 
So I really want you guys to, y'all can stand. So I really want y'all to think about that. We're not just suffering for suffering's sake. It has a purpose. Yes. And there's a way to suffer. There's a posture that you're supposed to keep during your suffering. We don't suffer like the world and go through stuff and kicking and stricken and all that kind No, you still display the fruits of the Spirit in your suffering. That's the Christian way. That's the Christ-like way to go through suffering. He showed us so many, we have many examples in the Bible of the way Christ suffered. He didn't throw up his hands and quit. He didn't run. Even while he was on the cross, he still displayed the fruits of the Spirit. It never ended. And so shall it be with us. Amen? Amen. Amen. I love y'all. I love you.